Hey builders, ever dreamt of building apps that sing with data without drowning in code? Apps that dance between front-end beauty and back-end brawn? Well, in this video, we're discussing the ultimate low-code power couple, BuildShip and Flutterflow. When you think about what goes into building an app, think fancy UI, buttons that dance, and visuals that pop. That's what's known as the front-end. But what about the data? Who stores it, connects it, makes it all work? That's the back end, the unsung hero, quietly storing your data and keeping everything ticking. Without a solid back end, there's no magic on the front end. But in low code land, things can get a little blurry. Flutterflow can handle some back end tasks, but its focus is very much on the front end. So, what about the back end? Enter BuildShip, a powerful low code back end builder that lets you create complex workflows without writing a single line of code. Imagine hundreds of pre-built nodes at your fingertips, ready to send emails, generate reports, or connect to databases. Just drag, drop, and watch the magic happen. And if you can't find the node you're looking for, BuildShip's incredible inbuilt AI can build a custom node just for you. You can even tweak it in low code so you're always in control. Now the million dollar question, where do you start? Front end or back end first? The answer depends on your app's data appetite. If you're already rocking Flutterflow or need Firebase features like authentication, start with the front end. But if you're wrangling massive data sets, complex calculations, or non firebase databases, BuildShip's backend playground is your perfect starting point. To showcase this dynamic duo in action, let's build a barcode scanning app. Imagine scanning a product and instantly unlocking its secrets nutritional info, reviews, even suggested recipes. This example perfectly highlights the front end back end combo. Let's kick off in BuildShip and create a workflow that captures the barcode, gathers all the juicy details, and sends them back to Flutterflow, ready to wow your users. So here we are in BuildShip with a blank new workflow. There are lots of ways you can trigger a workflow to start in BuildShip, from having it start when data changes in your Firebase or Superbase database, to a Stripe webhook or a Firebase authenticated user. But the most common is a REST API call. Let's call this scan. Now, let's have a think. What build ship magic do we want to happen behind the scenes to make this really pop? Firstly, since we're going to be getting the barcode from Flutterflow, why don't we hook into the Open Food Facts API? They'll take a barcode and send back all of the details about a product that we can then use further on in our workflow. Now, we could look through all the documentation, study up on Open Food Facts API calls, or we could use the magic. Of build chips generate with AI and just tell it what we want. All set. Let's just quickly check the code to make sure it's doing what we want. It's using the Open Food Facts API, taking the barcode and returning the name of the product and the image. Looks good to me. So, what else could we do? Well, now that we have the name of the product, why don't we use ChatGPT to return some interesting facts about the product? We can use the pre built node here in BuildShip. Bring in our API key, which you can securely store. Our system prompt can be, you are a fact delivery AI. Your goal is to provide interesting facts about a product. All right, now user request will be the name of the product that comes back from Open Food Facts. Okay, good. The model we'll use is GPT-4 Turbo. Now, before we move on, we need to make sure that BuildChip's expecting the parameters that we're going to send it. So we need to come in here and edit this initial API call because the query is going to include a barcode. So we change this to barcode. Now, once we're happy with everything we're producing, we want to format it. So let's return it back to Flutterflow. Now the value we're returning needs to be a JSON object. So we're going to need to write this, but it's really easy. For example, we've asked Open Food Facts to return the name of a product and the image. Well, we can simply write that in here. So we're returning the name of a product and the image, but we're also asking OpenAI to return some facts about the product. Well, let's go in here and see what it's returning. At the moment, it's just returning the object as a complete string, and probably that's fine. Let's have a look at how it looks. All right, hit ship, and then we can start building this out in Flutterflow. Let's create a new project. And we'll create something blank and we'll just do something simple. We'll call it barcode for now. So this project's going to have two pages. The first that lets us scan our barcode and the second, which returns all the useful information that we've had BuildShip gather for us. 
Let's start with the main page. This is just a simple blank page we're going to call barcode scan. Now we want a big button in the middle of the page. Let's add an icon button. Let's make it really big with a big barcode. So the idea is when the user clicks our barcode, Flutterflow will open the camera, scan the barcode, and then use BuildShip's API to send everything over. Now BuildShip provides an incredible export tool that lets you export your API and have it directly imported into Flutterflow. So here we go. Let's export the YAML, and then back in Flutterflow, we can import that in as a brand new API call using this button here. So it's created our own group called BuildShip, and underneath, here's our barcode scanning API. It even brought in the query parameters that we need to send it, like barcode. So immediately, if we have a barcode, we can test this out. Now let's test our API. Great. We've got back a JSON object that contains our name, the image, and the facts. That's great. So down here, Flutterflow has helpfully recommended the JSON paths that we might want to include and be able to access in our project. Let's definitely add all three of those in. We'll call that name, image, and facts. Now let's set up our second page, the page that's going to show all the information about our product. There are a few good templates that Flutterflow provide. This one's not bad. We'll call it details. So here's where we might want to feed in the name of our product. Here's where we might want to display our product. And here's where we might want to display our fact. Let's just remove everything else. Now on this page, we know we're going to have three variables returned from our API call. So let's set those up as page parameters so we can send them through when they arrive. Their name, which is a string, image, an image URL, and facts, another string. Now let's bind those to these elements on the page. And just for consistency, let's rename this fix. And in case we might have a lot of facts, let's give it a lot of lines to work through. Great. Now back on our original page, we need to make our call to our BuildShip API. On tap, we're going to make a backend call to our API. Flutterflow is helpfully included here. We need to send through a barcode. Now, we haven't scanned for our barcode yet, so let's do that now. That's a new action that happens first, where we scan for a barcode in barcode mode. We're going to call this output variable barcode scanned. Great. So now when we come here to send our barcode, we have an action output called barcode scanned we can send right through. Now, if that API call is successful, that's great. We can navigate directly to our page and pass through the variables that have come through from our API call. And we've set these up as JSON paths, predefined paths, name, image, and facts. That's great. But if our API call isn't successful, well, we should tell the user. So let's send them a little snack bar. Barcode scan unsuccessful. And I think we're ready to test. With our Flutter app loaded on mobile, we scan our barcode. We see the loading indicator that shows our API call has been made, and then all of our results returned. So there you have it. The dynamic duo of BuildShip and Flutterflow. Together, they're the low-code dream team. What will you build with this unstoppable combo? Happy building.